here we go, back again. And it's been a long, stressful, hard week at work and outside of work. But we've come to Friday and Friday, we all need a little bit of a drink. Whether it's non-alcoholic or alcoholic, we all need to refresh the parts that other drinks cannot reach. And breaking news coming out of Sunday day, two bits of breaking news. The first one... Energy drink entrepreneur William Storey launches a bid to buy Sunderland from Stuart Donald. Current owner Stuart Donald, Stuart Donald, Stuart Donald is keen to sell the club, obviously. Energy drink entrepreneur William Storey says he has launched a bid to buy Sunderland. Current owner Stuart Donald, who resigned as chairman last weekend, is keen to sell the club. Storey, the CEO of the Rich Energy, Rich Energy, revealed the news of his bid via Twitter on Friday. I am limited to what I can say due to NDA, non-disclosure agreement, but I can confirm that I have launched a formal legal offer for Sunderland AFC, he wrote. I have significant funds from blue chip backers. Sunderland are a giant of English football and their fans deserve a team to reflect the stature. Yes, so William Storey, co-founder of the energy drink, firm Rich Energy has put a bid in to buy Sunderland. His education university was at St Andrews and he can speak French, which is very useful when he want to buy all those rich, talented French players. He got a lot of his wealth from selling a tobacco farm in Zimbabwe and he's had partnership in the past with a billionaire. Something to do with porno as well, I think. But well, that's another story. But it says here, He's told Sky Sports, story is yet to prove funding is in place. While Sunderland remain in talks with a number of groups over the potential sale of the club, Donald, who reiterated his desire to sell Sunderland last week, is looking for £35 million for the club he bought two seasons ago. The British businessman promised not to outstay his welcome when he took over from Ellis Short in 2018. Sunderland failed to achieve their objective of promotion for two seasons in a row under Stuart Donald. So yes, this Mr. William Storey, the rich man, energy firm, is going to put a bid in. He's put a bid in to buy Sunderland. Now, will, will Donald sell the club or will he want to stay involved in the club? There's no way this bloke with his consortium of, of, of rich backers will want, obviously, to keep Stuart Donald. Now, who is William Storey? The rich energy CEO claimant have launched a takeover bid for Sunderland AFC. William Storey. William Storey, William Storey, William Storey. William Storey claims to have made a bid to purchase Sunderland. Supporters have reacted with concern after Storey's name circulated in regards to take over the club and his business in history has certainly been tumultuous. Here, we take a look at the man behind. Who is William Storey? Let's have a look at him. Let's have a good close look at him there. There we go. The big bearded man. He's been in Formula One at some point. Story is one of the co-founders of the current chief executive of energy drink firm Rich Energy. The businessman was educated at St Andrews University and claims to have had previously backed, been on the books at QPR, only to be released before making a senior appearance. Well, he must have been a good footballer. He later founded a sport management business before moving into energy drink Field having founded Rich Energy in 2015, the drink itself said to have been invented in 2009, but the company didn't come to make it into existence six years later. Story is primarily based in Richmond. It's not too far away if it is indeed the New Yorkshire Richmond. Yes, Story's involvement in sport is long-standing. Rich Energy became one of the first sponsors of West Ham United Women upon their launch in 2017, which reports claimed, claiming that Story was worked, Story has worked with David Sullivan and David Gould in a number of ventures. So, one of the key ventures Story has hit with the headlines was Rich Energy, an ill-fated sponsorship of Formula One, one team has. It was claimed that the high-profile billionaire's backed Story to secure the sponsorship Thought to be worth around 16 million. So he has got some good ties, this Mr. Williams story, and he has dealings in all sorts of things. Now, one of the billionaires was a pornographic 
I, I say, I'm not going to go into that, but he has, he has, he's dabbled in all sorts of different things. So do we want this guy involved in Sunderland? Will he have Sunderland's interests at heart? I don't know. Could it be any worse than Stuart Donald? Probably not. Probably not. He, I mean, let's face it, most businessmen come into owning a business with the idea of making a profit. Now, Donald did what he did when he bought Sunderland. Whether he persuaded Ella Short to get rid of all the debt, I don't know. We'll never know. Now, Stuart Donald has came in. And if he got Sunderland to the Championship or got Sunderland to the Premier League, you wouldn't be good him selling the club for millions and making a fortune. But he's failed at Sunderland Association Football Club. Stuart Donald has failed. Now, his failings means he shouldn't walk away with a massive profit. So it's basically, if he spent 16 million, which is, you know, which is, you know, supposed to be allegedly, and he wants 35, he's trying to pocket way over the odds for Sunderland, which he doesn't deserve because he's failed. Charlie Methon has failed the club. So what are your thoughts on that? Now, other breaking news coming out today is Tom Flanagan has signed a two-year deal to stay at Sunderland. Tom says he has unfinished business with Sunderland. He's raring to go. The 28-year-old's raring to go when he resumes training. Now, for me, surely you would have some of your players back in training now. You've got to bring your players back in. Stuart Donald doesn't want to pay the bills, doesn't want to pay the wages, so he won't start them back in training. Now, the season starts in September the 12th, apparently I've heard. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I think that's basically what it is. It starts on September the 12th. Now, we're talking here about Tom Flanagan. Flanagan established himself as a first choice option of the left of Parkinson's back three. Now, he says he gets on really well with Phil Parkinson and he has unfinished business at Sunderland. Now, Tom Flanagan, we all know, we all know there's a bit of flappiness about him when he was Jack Ross. We, we did call him, we did call him, and I don't know if I did start this, but I do apologise if I did. But he was flappy. He has, he has a tendency to flap about the ground, he has a tendency, you know, he looks a bit flappy on the pitch and he makes, very lot, he makes a lot of mistakes in his early, his early time with, with Jack Ross. Way towards the end of Jack Ross, anyway, especially that Coventry five, we got we got hammered five four, whatever that was. You know, he, he was a bit flappy, but then he got his confidence back and he came back to himself. And you know, you like players and you like people who, you know, get stuck in. And because the field or I had I had a bad part. I mean, everybody, even my running days, I failed in a lot of races. I went through a bad patch in training. But it's about the character of bouncing back. And Tom Flanagan, his character shone through. Now, I don't believe in anybody getting abuse of anybody at all. No footballers deserve to be abused by fans when they're out with the family. Now, apparently Tom was abused in the supermarket. It's ridiculous. It should never happen. A shame. Shameful for those people who did that. It's ridiculous. Tom Flanagan is a nice bloke. Got a nice family. Yes, we can criticise his football. And we can have a, a laugh and a joke. But when he, he has the character and he's the man enough and strong enough person to pull through and turn and work. He must have worked really hard to turn his game around. Because last season he played some fantastic matches you know, under Phil Pattinson. He did score a couple of goals. He scored a goal against Portsmouth towards the back end of last season. So he went through a good patch at Sunderland with Jack Ross. Went through a really bad Flappy patched and he came back strong and this season he's been, for me, he's been one of the, the better defenders. Fantastic. So I'm pleased he signed a two-year contract under Sunderland with Phil Partinson. And I do wish Tom all the best because now it's Tom Fantastic Flanagan. Yes, Tom, Fra Tom Flanagan, fantastic. We need him firing on all cylinders next season. When apparently it starts in September the 12th. Now, sometimes... When I make videos, I do I do a bit gibberish and I go on and on a bit. But we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, Charlie Methven. Now, when Charlie Methven came into Sunderland with Stuart Donald, I, was, I wasn't convinced about Charlie Methven. And I did find a website online where one of his businesses, Glass, Glassdoor's Dragon Advisory, his business in London, there was some really, really bad reviews on there. One out of five reviews. The worst the worst owner I've ever worked under 
One person said back in March 2019, the most toxic work environment I've ever known due to the owner, Charlie Methvin, the treatment to his employees. Now, we saw this sort of treatment on Sun Until I Die. Regardless how bad a member of staff is, you don't go on and swear at them, abuse them, make them feel belittle, small in front of thousands of people. It's absolutely pathetic. And that's the kind of bloke Charlie Metman came across on Sunday that I die. Patheticness, the disgustingness of doing that. Even if she wasn't a good worker, you pull it to one side, you take her in the office, you sit her down with HR and you go through what you expect. If they're not doing the job, they get the warnings and they get dismissed. You don't go out there and abuse them in front of thousands of people to see. And these are the reviews coming off the website online. Again, it's just allegedly on the website. I've seen these on the website myself. Another review back in October. The worst company to work for. One star. Back in February, the founder Charlie Methvin was the nastiest and most unprofessional boss I ever worked I've ever worked for. So these these are online now. Whether people are making these up, I don't know. I'm just giving you what's online. The proof is online. I've read them myself. Now the end of the day, I don't hate Stuart Donald and I don't hate Charlie Medford and I do wish them all the best in the future, but they weren't right for Sunderland and we actually know that now. Now I've got a little song for, for, for Sean Middleton. Yes, Sean Middleton. We know how he doesn't like Stuart Donald. So next time, Sean, you're out there and about, you can sing this. Shout, shout, get Donald out. He is the man we can do without. Come on. Sean's talking to you. Come on. Shout, shout. Get Donald out. He is the man we can do without. Come on. Sean's talking to you. Come on. There you go, Sean. That's just for you. I thought I'd write a little tune because we know how much you don't like Stuart Donald. But like I said, I have no ill feeling to Stuart Donald and he shouldn't be getting any abuse at all. He should just sell a club, walk away and enjoy the rest of his life and marry Charlie Methvin. There we go. At the end of the video, let's hope we get a good owner and... There'll be more stuff coming out about this Williams story. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a good idea or a bad idea. People out there who know the ins and outs, leave your comments down below in the comments section and we'll see you later. Right, that's enough of my waffling on. Have a nice weekend. <sighs> I am going to enjoy my weekend. See you later.